How many of you have ever missed an opportunity that when you look back on it, you'd said, oh, I wish I'd done that. Anybody ever had that experience? Many years ago, the Lord spoke to me. It was a very unusual word. I'd never received it like this before. He said, son, I want you to buy gold. I invest in different things at times, stock market and so forth and so on. When he spoke that, I thought, well, that's unusual, but I'll do what he said. I, gold was at $250 an ounce. I called a gold broker. They sent me out a prospectus and they called me back about a week or so later and said, um, I said to them, I'm ready to invest. Then they asked me a question. Did you read the perspective? You have to say yes or I can't take your order. I guess it's a law that you have to read the perspective when you buy gold. Well, the problem was <clears throat> I had not read it. And I wasn't going to lie. So I said no. I told him I would call him back when I had read it. And I got busy. I never read the prospectus. Never called him back. Gold went from $250 an ounce to $1,500 an ounce. God was trying to bless me. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, God wants to bless you. He's trying to bless me with a 500% increase. But because of my lack of diligence, I missed my opportunity. There are opportunities in every believer's life, God gives them special opportunities. Everybody say special opportunities. I call them God moments. And if we obey and persevere, we can experience in a greater way God's blessing. So oftentimes we miss those God moments as I did at that point. And that brings us to our text because you see a God moment being shared about in a very dramatic way. Let me kind of give you the context of what's going on. Jehoash has become king of the northern kingdom of Israel. His army has been decimated by the Syrians under his father's reign just before him. It's recorded there in 2 Kings 13, 7. And Jehoash's greatest asset, of course, was not his army. It was the prophet Elisha. And there's a problem. Elisha is dying. And the king knew that Elisha was his greatest asset because you can read it there in verse 14. He cries over Elisha and he says, my father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. He knew clearly that it was Elisha that spared Israel. Elisha has no one to pass his anointing to. Remember, Elijah passed the anointing on to Elisha in the form of the mantle. There was a plan for Elisha's servant to have the mantle. His name was Gehazi. But as you know, Gehazi aborted God's plan for his life by his greed and by his lying. So there's no one to pass the anointing to. So if you're Elisha and you know you're going to die, what are you going to do? What is it that you could leave to bless not only this king, but to bless your nation. 